Well, good afternoon. Before we get carried away with the rest of the stuff, it's the uh, 26th, it's about 10 to 4. The day has improved. I did some mowing, and then not long after it rained on me. So I probably timed that well for a change. And the reason we're standing here looking at my gloriously green grass, other than the fact that it is now glorious and green, considering the rain and all the rest of it, and the fact that it was all brown at one point, yeah, maybe we'll have uh, some shows. No, no cats. Cats are, actually, as it's 10 to 4, the cats are all saying to me, why are you out there jabbering to yourself? Why aren't you inside bigs? So the reason I'm here before I get all carried away is a little update on the catio. It's still there, as you can see. I did have to make a repair, and I probably mentioned this here. So that screw there, that one, it's probably not in focus, but you'll forgive me for that. Back up a bit. That screw there had come out, and it's now standing proud, so it seems to have worked. It's still here, people. It's not blown away. The sun and the rain have not done anything to it. I even added uh, what is now somewhat sickly and dead grass for Chester. Now to think of a way of. Uh, making the grass a little happier and maybe lasting a bit longer. So anyone's got any ideas, uh, leave them in the comments. That would be fabulous if there are anybody watching this and if there are any comments. These were pieces of grass I had dug up that had actually survived over, over the winter, or even overnight as I was originally going to say. Down there in the little humping area. Um, they had survived the winter and come back, but Apparently they didn't seem to like this, so I have to think of a way. Chester says, where's my food? What are you doing? Why are you doing this? Well, here's why. Oh, there she is, off with his can. So, it's the 25th at about 4 o'clock. And the reason that we're looking at the concrete floor in the garage, and my sneaky trainers, is this. I have just joined the Green Age with the Mitsubishi Outlander PHEV GT. I've got to get some more of the toys that I ordered. they got to um, get them in and fix them or attach them. This isn't unfortunately the colour I would have liked, however it is the colour I got. So we have a white one. And as is the, always the way, when I took the VW back, because I know no VW now, we are a VW free family, um, beautiful blue skies. Go inside, do all the paperwork, and the guy's doing his best, you know. And get out, and it rains. So my lovely new car, with barely miles on it, which I really should go and work out how many miles on it, got rained on. It's glorious. Alright, so we're now inside the car and I've moved it, and one hopes that my next door neighbour isn't watching this because I'm probably going to get some really strange looks, and yes there is traffic. So this is what this thing sounds like every time I start it up. Foot on the brake, get this whenever it's decided that it's going to do what it's going to do okay it's bringing up the radio and then I have to obey all of the things so I being a good boy I will hit agree although I don't know if that actually worked and yes and the Bluetooth worked the Bluetooth worked remarkably quickly remarkably well oh look at that I found a button it allows me to uh yeah, so far I've done 100% EV driving. Ah, now that's partially the one I'm looking for. What that tells me is who's feeding the wheels. And that's probably a good thing. Oh, and that... I don't know what that is. Does that mean I'm in eco mode? Which I don't wish to be, thank you. Uh, I don't know what that is either, but that is part of the selling point of this thing. S-W-A-C. Oh. Uh, 
I got six months or 7,500 miles before the service. And then we're back to trip. So anyway, the one other thing I wanted to find, and it has iPod and apps and a phone and move it across and all of this good stuff, the GPS, now that's funny. So it doesn't actually have a map application, but it does actually tell you where you are. So right now I am there, wherever there is, and it's picked up, I'm assuming, five GPS, which is what it says. No, it doesn't like that. Okay, we'll go home again. Vehicle setting, air conditioning, but this here, this app here, I really don't know what that is. Reset, function description, well, function description, there we go. Tells you all sorts of glorious things which I don't really care about, so I will close that button. But this right here, ooh, battery's down. This right here is very interesting because this tells you when, a little more clearly than the guy who I had previously, when the um, battery is sending power to the wheels, when it's sending, being regen braked, or when the engine's involved. And as you can see right now I have, well it tells me I have about 9 miles of uh, range, which is fine. I've been playing with it. So I can get about 380 miles according to this, at least on the petrol. Well, that's also fine, I'm not going that far. And my intent, once I'm finished with this, is to actually uh, do up some wiring in the in garage, which is another reason why I pulled the car out. And uh, see if I can see if I can uh, hook up for the charging, so that I can charge this baby tomorrow night for tonight for tomorrow morning even. So heating, air conditioning, all of that good stuff. There's a couple of buttons down here. I'm not really sure what the that is. The active, not active. This is power. I think that's a clock. Oh, no, I lied. A finger goes in there, so I think that's actually where you're supposed to put the key. Not that I'm going to. Uh, heated. Something to do with lane for the power. Down there. Yeah. Down there. This puppy is very odd, but we'll come back to that. So we have four-wheel drive lock, EV mode only. Um parking brake and a hold button and what that allows you to do is once you have your seatbelt on is to roll up to a set of traffic lights and then hit that button and not have to keep your foot on the brake and then when you hit the gas away it goes or when you hit the power there it goes that's the wife's happy place right there the powered seats high and low so I have a feet no it's not low DA so that would just be the power so yeah nice little vehicle I'm assuming that down there, once it comes into range, is where the uh, sensors are for the car. LDW, I have no idea, but I'm not going to turn it off. Crash, that's a crash system, and I'm not going to turn that off either. So, oh, that there. So I'm assuming that one, two, three is the, either the strength of the lights or um, whether or not the... Uh, if you've got a tow on the back, whether or not you change it up and down. You have traction control off, and then that button uh, there was the one I was fiddling with to try and work out what's going on. So I won't go through all the fun and games of turning the car on. Flappy pedals are dealing with the regen braking. Um, not very nice. But uh, what we will do, and I don't know if you can see it from there, is I will now put foot on brake and go across and down, and I'm in drive. I am in drive, trust me, because as soon as I let go, we are going to move. And here we go. Not the best indicators I've ever heard in my life. Down there, so let's go down there. So, I'm gonna, I've got no one behind me, someone in front, but let's give it some beans. Enough 
forgot there was a stop sign there. But you get the idea. Although it's never going to outpace a Ferrari. Wow, there's some nice houses down here too. It will uh, keep up with traffic, that's for sure. The suspension copes quite well with the bumps. It will also, oh, I wonder what road this is. Go for a little right then, shall we? Easier to turn right than it is left. So, try not to go around corners too quickly when your camera is not tethered very well. Uh, it's been a while since I've recorded stuff. Maybe I should buy a GoPro and a proper mount. What do you think? Hmm? All right, well, here we go again. Check your ear rolls. Um, so I pulled off, once we pulled onto Walden, I pulled off into this one just to see where I am. So I don't actually know where I am. So let's just carry on. Maybe this time I'll try not to throw it around because, you know, that might be good. Said cyclists have to follow the road rules. Oh wait, that's right, everybody. Here we go again. It is uh, exceedingly quiet in here, as you can hear. So this is Pleasant View, and we are going to go back home, and then I'm going to go and put holes in, holes into the ceiling so I can run a power wire so we don't trip up when we're going somewhere four miles. That was the hope as well, was to try and get the battery emptied a tad so that so that I can charge it up, but right now, there's something beeping at me. Some of the stuff I've read online, or played online, says this thing makes an inordinate amount of noise, and it seems to, so maybe I'll try and find the noise-making areas and try and tone them down a bit. All right, so here we are, home sweet home. Let's try not to do that. But anyway, so the other fun thing which you may not be able to see, the park brake is actually a button in front of the um, shifter. So that's now in park, even though it bounces, because remember I'm on a slope. Oh, excuse me. I'm assuming that's to turn the brightness up or down. Not been out at night time yet, so I don't know how good it is. So now we will turn off. It says see you. Isn't that great? All right, well, thanks for riding along. So, that was the end of another exciting video and I'm glad to see you've got this far. If you liked the video, please give it a thumbs up, subscribe. If you didn't like the video, give it a thumbs down and leave a comment. Tell me why you didn't like it. Maybe I can do it better. As always, I've been Dave, you've been fabulous, and up here should be the Ask Uncle Dave text. So if you have a question, leave it in the comments, hashtag Ask Uncle Dave. I'll get to it, we'll answer it in one of the future videos. Not sure what's going to be next, so you need to come on back and see what's doing. Thank you and goodbye.